This is the Chab Dog Sports Talk Show. We're ADHD hosts that are OCD about our sports. Host Brandon Chabner brings you Eric the Well Read. Frank the Tank. And Boston Mark. For sports talk that's breaking news everywhere else. Now here's your host, Brandon Chabner. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Jab Dog Sports Talk. This is the Plenty of 1970 show, and we're going to go back to 1970 this week. Uh, it's also also the oh, it's the second week, second show of June, not the first. So I'm glad I didn't completely lose track of time. How are you doing, Eric? Hey, Jab Dog. All right. Well, it's good to be uh, good to be here to do today's show, and uh, we've got our our I think we got our normal guests come calling in. We I think that's Frank Fleming. Did you just call in? Guest Frank? And, and co-host and or, co-host, or honorary yes. guest and yes. functional co-host. And this is brought to you by Chabner Law, serving Southern California's transactional business leads. We also do estate planning and uh we'll be coming Wills and Trusts. Yes. Wills and Trusts. We'll have more to talk about that. Yeah. It's yeah. We'll, new business. We're putting together there some information for that. And states. um and uh, also by Chab Dog Sports Blog for your head of your sports headlines and binding sports commentary. Uh, so, hey, Frank, how are you doing? Uh, I mean, fuck me, yeah, yeah. Could you smell all those Wendy's hamburgers getting broiled last yeah, night? They were charbroiling like they're Burger King. <laughs> In Atlanta, there. <laughs> that was a lot of grease going up there. Oh, my goodness. God. But, you know, the, the, the more I see these protests, the more I, I actually think the the only way that the that they will be happy is if we're in chains. I think you got something there. Yeah, if we're in chains. Yeah, because they, they they my the understanding I have is that the United States was founded illegitimately, and so because it was illegitimate yep. from the start, it's not even worth saving. They want to just get rid of it completely. And, 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 and this goes to the education people, the people who uh, started the uh, Howard Zinn. Howard Zinn. Howard and Zinn. This bitch, Dean Elliott. Ooh, who, who's Howard Zinn? He wrote the uh, the textbook of hating America. Really? Yes. It's like a high school or university textbook. Uh, I think a lot of high schools use it. Mm-hmm. It's called the People's History of the United States. Hmm. Okay. And the whole concept of it is we are the most evil nation ever created. Really? This is in our high schools. We're teaching children this. Yes. Huh. That's horrible. I don't know. I'd have to check that out. Well, I've heard in of fact, stuff of this before. I didn't, I didn't talk to my son about his history book, but. Does he hate America? In fact, no. He of course, so. Soprano did. He loves America. Mm-hmm. Despite the history book. Remember, they were looking at AJ's. There's an episode where they're looking at AJ's textbook. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And they, they, they say that uh, how evil uh, Columbus was. Oh, they tore his statue down. Oh well, I've been noticing all that. Yeah, yeah they tore his. Yeah, this has been a lot I of know talk. You've been noticing trash it talking. Too. Uh, Columbus for years now. I remember I saw that on the Sopranos. They had a whole episode on that. Yeah, because they were trying to get rid of Columbus Day as well. Yeah, we have that holiday. Remember, remember the scene where they're, uh, where they're reading, uh, where they're offended by what's in uh, AJ's textbook? Uh-huh. That's the textbook. Okay. Well, the People's History of the United States. Okay, well, we'll uh, we've got that. We'll make a reference to that. What are you looking for? This? Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll make. Uh, I'm going to look that up. Um, become a, uh, a textbook mm-hmm. that a lot of high schools use to like shoot down and, and teach people to hate America. Okay, well that might explain part of it. That might explain part of it. But here's here's something I was thinking about the other day. Um, 
you know, it's all fun and games right now, and Chaz just occupies a few city blocks, and yeah, there's all these people out there marching and stuff like that, but... By the way, this is the Chab Dog Sports Talk Show, not the Chaz, Chaz Dog. Yeah, this is not the Chaz Dog. This is dog. not to be confused with Chaz <laughs> Dog. <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. I just want to clarify that. Well, I was thinking, you know, if, if the shit really started to go down, I mean, really started coming down in buckets and stuff, then we'd really see where people truly stood. On Black Lives Matter and the movement. Yeah, if it happens in your neighborhood, I don't think you're going to sit there and yeah, not say anything. Places. And, and then I thought, you know, I wonder where the Chinese Americans stand on Black Lives Matter. And I wonder where the Hispanic, our Hispanic brothers and sisters, which outnumber the our black brothers and sisters by you know three to one here in California. I wonder how they stand on this if the shit came down. What do you think, Tech? Uh, who knows? Uh, I do know that the uh, California legislator is uh, planning on voting for reparations. Oh, yeah, reparations. Chowdog? What's that? Reparations. Uh, yeah, that's that's going to be one of the next issues. Because uh, I've been hearing that. <clears throat> so, we what, we'd all, we'd all that end up paying higher taxes to deal with reparations? No, people in New Jersey. Yep. <clears throat> Governor Newsom's, Governor Newsom's plan <coughs> is currently mm. tabled uh, has the people of New Jersey paying for mm. the reparations for the people in California because you know we're not to blame. We didn't have slavery out here. It's, it's your fault. So, t- so it'll be a tax on you, Tank. Northern state. Talk talk about you know the the Revolutionary yeah, War the was guy, all about. And this is the guy. Who, this is the guy who wrote. Now, he wrote a number of books, and they're all used, in, a lot of them use this textbook, like A Young People's mm-hmm. History of the United States, which basically teaches that uh, everything in the United States is a lie. This guy, it, this guy was a communist. The guy was actually an agent of the KGB when oh. he first wrote the book. Oh, wow. Okay. Was that, hidden, mm-hmm. was that a hidden fact at the time? Probably not. The guy's always been a, a red. Oh, okay. Well, that's, you know, if you're going to learn communism, you might as well get it right from a communist. I mean, it's, that sounds fitting to me. Huh? It, hmm. It's not a problem. Yeah, that, you know, you know, right. If we know who people are, it's. I, I guess I'm disappointed that you know who this organized plan in our education system. And, I certainly and, saw it. And and this guy was a teacher, mm-hmm. a college professor at Columbia. Mm-hmm. And guess who? One of his most favorite pupils was George Soros. No, Bill Clinton. Soros. You're on the right track. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I don't know. Hillary Rodham. Barack Obama. Oh, younger still. This one, Barry. This one, <clears throat> his favorite professor at Columbia. Yeah, Barry Soweto. Uh huh. This was his favorite professor at Columbia. Yeah, I've heard of this guy. I didn't realize. Okay, I didn't realize that's who you were talking about, but now I know who you're talking about. And oh, he's yeah. the one that wrote this this, this book. And, and he wrote like a series of like anti-American books that are all used as textbooks. Mm-hmm. This guy, too. He yeah, thinks, it's... And it's basically that the United States is an illegitimate country. It's an evil mm-hmm. country. Mm-hmm. And the only way that the, the, that the that the wrong side won the Cold War, that the Soviet Union was the good guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Patton thought so too. Yeah, that, this is who this guy is, and this is yeah. the most influential. <laughs> yeah, this, this guy's have to play books that. are like ninety mm. percent of schools now. This is what's taught in history, and not history. Well, if that's the case, that's nonsense because that's you know everything you're saying there is just uh, distorted. Another college professor, mm-hmm. and, and, and you know it's what it is. It's college professors. You know, in the end, there are three people who are responsible for just the destruction mm-hmm. of the United States, mm-hmm. and those are the media, popular culture, and college professors. Well, popular culture has always That's been the point. destruction, so let's we can take them out of this. The media is a, is come to the party, you know, late in the game here. 
and college professors. Mm-hmm. I saw this happen in my lifetime. Yeah, you because know, I remember I, I was you know, when I began school. There, there seemed to be a good mix between liberals and conservatives. But as my school went on, I saw that, especially in in university, I saw it turning over before my eyes, where older professors were retiring and being replaced by this up and coming. Did you see that when you were in in college, Chab Dog? Notice this up and coming uh, leftist uh, elite, fucking tenured mean, I, bunch of bullshit professors mm-hmm. spouting their views. I mean, you you were at a very liberal. I, I, I didn't I didn't notice the professors being excessively your liberal. schools are all like hyper liberal aren't they the ones but you went the, to the student bodies were i mean definitely definitely in college yale student body was very liberal and then in law school the professors were on the liberal side yeah they were yeah yeah see so but so definitely. yeah we saw it Dick. <clears throat> we saw them take over I but, thought I was curious. I didn't really see any that, organized movement behind it but it just seemed to be all these leftists uh, that that was more were gravitating I, with the Vietnam War, I think that it was post. Yeah, it was definitely fallout mm-hmm. from the Vietnam War. I think the lefties were really upset about being dragged into that mm-hmm. war in the first place, mm-hmm. and there were years of protests back then, much like we have today. You could play them the YouTube clip <coughs> with from the uh, the and, Chaz uh, thing. Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. Jane Elliott. Jane Elliott. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Frank, you want to hear about Chaz? We we got we got an informational clip off of YouTube you like. Yes, it's a short clip yeah. on the uh, Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone and what somebody <laughs> here thinks of it. What the fuck is going on here? Oh, thank God. Welcome to Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone. We need supplies. Excuse me? We're succeeding from the fascist states of Trump America. <laughs> That's a bold move, boy. We've had all our food stolen by homeless people. We need to keep undesirables out of our area. (laughs) Oh, and I need to search you. I'm not sure what you think you're gonna find on me, but I don't consent to unlawful searches. We are not the police. We are the anti-fascist action union of Seattle. If you touch me, motherfucker, you won't survive. (laughs) That is unlawful speech according to Chaz. This is America. You're an artsy. Ah, you hit me. Oh, God, you have a gun. Somebody help. It's a white supremacist. He's going to rape my sovereign auntie and preach religion and constitutions at me. No, you're the kind of stupid motherfucker who doesn't understand that a sheriff's deputy is a cop. You fucking piece of shit. We're gonna silence your racism and hate speech. Why is my neck bleeding? That happens when you get stabbed. Oh, no, my vaginal hormonal estrogen treatments will go to waste. No. That wasn't a hormone treatment. You were just a vegan retard. (laughs) Oh, you died. Good. Now, the rest of you motherfuckers listen. You don't get to murder, destroy communities and ruin good people's lives while acting like your ass is entitled to handouts from a country that you hate. You claim that we oppress you then beg for people to bring you phone cards and cigarettes? (laughs) Fuck you. Fuck you. And you, fuck you too. Piece of shit. You are subhuman. A parasite. I'm totally okay with protests, speaking out against things and petitioning against your local government to force them to unfuck themselves. (laughs) The mayor of Seattle is unfit to maintain citizenship, let alone a public office such as being the mayor. Or or dog catcher. But what you have done is not free speech. What you have done is destruction of property, terrorism, and the very tyrannical behavior that Americans like myself swore to defend this country from. You motherfuckers need to pack all your goddamn shit up and leave, (laughs) before federal agencies crush you violently. I'm dying still. Shut the fuck up. You are inviting the kind of people you claim to want to leave you alone. You are doing more harm to the people whose lives you claim matter. I remember you. You're that number lives matter fascist who thinks he's a servant of cats. You're worse than a Trump supporter. You're a free thinker. You're goddamn right. Hmm. All right. So, so uh, suppression of liberties and Chad. You know, of, of all of us, of our predictions, I, I have to give you credit, Tank. That you know, way back weeks ago, we made predictions of where things would be. You said that by June fifteenth, we'd be in anarchy. <laughs> you did. Do you remember that? No, no. You did. It's getting close. That's exactly what you said. On June 5th, there'll be complete We're anarchy. Not in anarchy. There is no. This is. This is. This is. The year from hell. Yeah. Yeah. 
could not have imagined that you'd be uh, right. Uh, if, if, you if Dave Thomas could see what was happening, he'd be turning over in his grave. <laughs> oh, Chad, I, I, I know I, Wendy's I, lit the fire. I, the other person I was talking about, Jean Elliott, uh, and Jean Elliott is white. Keep this in mind. Mm-hmm. She says that she says that we are a curse on civilization. Uh, white people are a curse on civilization. They can't help themselves <laughs> because they're jealous of the black man. And that the the only solution that we get this to fix things is for the white people to suffer three generations of slavery. I think. Well, weren't, weren't the Jewish people enslaved by the Egyptians, uh, Chad? Uh yeah, we were for quite a many, quite a number of years, wasn't it? I'll take my exemption there. Well, since well, I'm, no, a, I'm a Judeo. I get to claim that exemption. No, I, I'm Judeo Christian. I, I do too. I mean, I've been grandfathered into that. Jesus that, was uh, a Jew. I'm grandfather too. Yeah, I, you know the. Uh, you know, <laughs> he died for my you, sins. Uh, that was you know, you know, forty years of slavery. Claim a Jewish exemption. Jew. Here. <laughs> I know a Jew. I'm exempt. You know and and then if, if if you're you protect me. if you're married, that also counts as slavery. <laughs> 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 you're onto something, Jim. You know, <laughs> so I've got my sixty uh, years. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's your exemption, Frank? How you gonna get out of this? You go to the selfish uh, view of uh, being a Jew is, don't you? No, what's that? That the white people who claim to be Jewish are false, are false Jews. That the true Jews are the uh, are the Ethiopian and African people. Oh, yeah. That's I, not, I, there are I, not I, enough of them left. It's, I've heard of that story. They're called the Falashes. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, the, the black, black as spades. Yeah, so, but one of them was, definitely not. One of them was in a deli in New York City recently. Was that wasn't that one of them, Fr- Frank, who uh, uh, either was stabbed or shot up the deli and killed some people? Jersey City, Jersey City. Yeah, Jersey yes, City. Indeed, yes, indeed. Mm. Yeah. So they're they're not. Uh, there's mm. more of them than you think, Chab Doc. Okay. Uh, well, Tank, uh, if you really get upset and desperate, you can. Um, you can always do what John Shuck did in Mash, and uh, oh yeah, this uh, is this is especially for you, okay? <laughs> this is 1970. Another 1970s. Uh, A lot of people never knew this song had words to it. Did you know that? Yeah, this is the Mash song from 1970, the movie Mash, not the TV series, the movie. We played. Uh, we, we can have a ceremony for him in Chaz. We could we could do that. Like bring a, bring a coffin up there, and <laughs> we can do whatever we want. There's no law in chess. We have to get in there with a moving truck or something. Yeah, we we'll just move the barrier out of the way. I'll help you. Early morning <laughs> there he is. What did you say his name was? <laughs> the pains that are he actually was the guy's real name. He was a real character. This is a, an African American doctor. In the movie, his, his movie name match. was his name was Spear Spear, Spear Chucker. Yeah, he was. <laughs> that suicide is painless. But here's John Shuck. It brings yeah. on many changes. He's committing suicide in front of all the doctors. And I can take <laughs> He looks so calm, you know. It's like he's going to, it's like he's going to sleep or something. That's what he's doing. The game of life is hard to play. I'm going to lose it anyway. The loser. What happens? He slides there for about five minutes and realizes he's not dying. All I have to say. What's that? What's that, Tech? You do know who played him in the movie, don't you? Play well, played who in the movie? What do you, what do you mean? What okay. do you, who played Tucker in Mash? Oh, uh, who who who's played him? No, Fred the Hammer Williamson. Oh, Fred Williamson. Oh, so that was that was a, a football player? Yeah, Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, I remember the name. Oh, Kansas City Chiefs. Oh, Chiefs. He's with the Chiefs. Oh, the Chiefs. Okay. I thought he was the uh, Steelers. Oh. He, was with the Chiefs. he was with the Chiefs in Super Bowl One, and before the game, uh, before Super Bowl One, he said that he's going to knock out 
uh, Bart Starr. Oh, so he and, uh, shot his mouth he off. He got hurt. He got hurt. And uh, if you ever watched the footage of, uh, he got he ended up getting dinged up into the Super Bowl, and he got knocked out. And and all the uh, all the uh, pa- all the uh, Packers are going, "Hey, look who's down! It's the hammer! The hammer! <laughs> oh, he got hammered!" <laughs> uh, that that was so that was spear checker. That was spear oh, checker. Oh, you know, you're right. He did play for the Steelers at one point. I'm looking at his career now. He began his career with the Steelers. Only okay, one yeah. year with the Steelers. Okay. They cut him, I guess, and then he went to the AFL, played with the Raiders for a couple of years, and then played with the Chiefs. Mm-hmm. And did, that's where I'm only know. Did he have a good career? Did he have a good career? He did as an actor. <laughs> I was just. Uh, hey, he played. He played eight years. Was an AFL All Star. So, so he was that's pretty, pretty good. decent. Yeah. Uh, oh, listen, to, listen to, I, I'm reading some of his. Uh, <laughs> Some of, some of his uh, movie career. Let me see. Uh, yeah. Of course. He was in a match. Did he, he went from uh, acting into... Uh, he went, went from uh, the movies and the, the, the playing football into acting. Mm-hmm. He has a long... He has a, lo- a heavy list of... Uh, a lot of credits. credits. Mm-hmm. Yes. Was he... Now, I can't yeah. the name of the movie he was in in 1975. What's it called? Give me a clue. Boss N-Word. Oh. Oh, yes, that? Yes. I never was, saw that. Yeah, I've seen the title before. Yeah, I, I know the movie. Yes. Is that a movie that they're going to have to get rid of? Hey, geez, I guess they'll have to, <laughs> won't they? <laughs> That's pretty bad. Well, I mean, Fred Williamson actually wrote the movie. Mm-hmm. And starred in the movie, uh, played the, the the lead character in the movie. Well, he was the boss N word, all right. Mm. That was, there were a few movies like that. that yeah, I, they were called black exploitation flicks. Black yeah, black exploitation. Yeah, I'm trying yeah. to remember black the name of the one. I, I saw one recently, and I can't remember. Well, the, the original name. Shaft was one. Shaft's big score. Shaft. That was a Ooh, good movie. I here. liked that. There were, there were a lot of he, that, looking at looking at his uh, credits. He was in a lot of those black exploitation movies. Yeah, he made a real uh, name for himself. Yeah. He's a good-looking man. So. Hell up in Harlem. There's there's one. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. Black Caesar. Mm-hmm. Uh, black Caesar. Uh, uh, Fred Williamson was in uh, was in that lead role. Mm-hmm. Wow. And uh, Hell up in Harlem is actually a sequel to Black Caesar. What was? Hell up in Harlem. Oh, hell in Harlem. Okay. Why don't you play? You play the uh, the Vikings. Uh, the Vikings. Uh, yeah, Chiefs. Closest we have to football here. Clip for the Super Bowl 1970. This was like to hear John for one of the biggest talk. upsets of all time. The number ten upset of all time. The Chiefs win Super Bowl four. No, it wasn't an upset. We really believed we were going to win. We didn't feel at all like we were a 13-point underdog. This year, the AFL had another underdog representing it, a team that couldn't win its own division during regular season. But Coach Hank Stram and his Kansas City Wild West variety voice? show came to town with talent Jack and pride. Whitaker. That's Jack the Whitaker. fourth Super so. Bowl was the tenth and final year of the AFL. Going into its final game, this rival league wasn't given any respect. The Chiefs were viewed as one-time losers. They'd been blown out of Super Bowl one. Next league. That's a good football team, and it doesn't compare with the National Football League team. <laughs> <laughs> We were the oh, yes, stupid exactly. stepchild of professional football, not ready for prime time players. Jackson. So that was a motivating factor to us. Let's go, boys. Hey, let's go, man. Thanks, man. We took on uh, the Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings had been dominant in the NFL that year. The feeling going into the game was that the Vikings were an unbeatable team. The Vikings scored the most points, permitted the fewest, and dished out such punishment along the way that they came to be known as the Purple Gang. And we're talking about the Purple People Eaters of Minnesota, and they were tough. As our number 10 upset unfolded, it was obvious that the AFL team had been greatly underestimated. The Chiefs 
matched up with the Vikings in almost lethal ways. Our defense is not that. The area really dominated that football game. It took away their running game. It took away their passing game. They're beating the best that the NFL has to offer out here today. Our number 10 upset wasn't just a victory for the Chiefs, but a 23-7 blowout. The Chiefs had a much more complex offensive array than what the Vikings had. The Chiefs were in motion shift almost every play. We're catching them moving a little bit. They're not ready for that quick count. Look at them running around. They didn't even know where to go on the lineup. Yeah, Kasulki was running around there like it was a Chinese fire drill. Hank Stram <laughs> putting together what kind one of fire drill? Chinese. Yeah, Just keep matriculating the ball down the field, keep boys. Tri- yeah, keep matriculating the ball. That's his famous trap. line. 65 toss power trap. 65 toss power trap. That might pop wide open, Rats. And there was a gaping hole there for Mike Garrett. Mike Garrett. Mike Garrett, you know where he, he ended up starring on the um, Hill Street Blues. Really? So when we won that Super Bowl. I think so. I'll ask Frank about that. It was a vindication for 10 years of a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that went into the AFL. It really is a satisfying conclusion to the Lamar 10 Hunt. years of the American football Young Lamar League. Hunt. Mm-hmm. Cool. That was cool. Was that right? Wasn't Mike Garrett on on TV actor as well? Mike Garrett? No, no. You're thinking about Ed Moran uh, on Hill Street Blues. Oh, Ed Marinero. Oh, Ed Marinero. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Ed I got Marinero, confused because he has Garrett, part. And... I, Mike, Mike Garrett was uh, for a while. I don't know if he is anymore. I know for a few years he was uh, the athletic director at uh, USC. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So he, he he was a decent runner, but n- he wasn't as good as Ed Marinero, right? Uh, Marinero had a better uh, professional career. I mean, uh, uh, Mike Garrett had a better professional career. Oh. I'm a borderline gamer. Oh, Marinero was just great at, uh, Cor- was it Cornell? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. He was, a, uh, I that was like a finalist for the Heisman. Yeah, he had. A, I mean, he had a great college career. Mike Garrett was pretty good, though. He he also he was good at USC, right? Yeah, and he even was, and then he, like I said, he went to become the uh, yeah uh, athletic director for a few years at SC. Well, that's that's kind of weird. They were both so they were both on Hill Street Blues together, and and they both were. High, you know, big big deal college running backs. I don't know about Mike Garrett being uh, on on. Uh, oh, on you know, I, I, I gotta get yeah, I gotta get that out of my mind. I don't know why I'm. <laughs> Maybe I'll have to to check that out, but I don't know why I thought that he was on, he was on there too. But it was just a, I know Ed Marinero. In fact, in fact, here it is. I'm, I'm reading Mike Garrett's background now. He was swept out of SC with that whole. Uh, when all that whole thing went down with uh, Reggie Bush, he was he was there when they were winning the national championships with uh, Pete Carroll. He was okay, Pete yeah. Carroll. So he got speaking of Reggie Bush, they just let Reggie Bush back into the USC family this week. Oh, he snuck him in through the back yeah. door. Uh-huh. So there's USC has Bush again. <laughs> we have Bush. We have Bush. <laughs> Remember yeah. that. Yeah. So Mike Garrett, after his career, became an administrator, not an actor. So he was an athletic director type of guy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he, he was. Uh, he was as uh, he was the AD at USC for almost twenty years. Yeah. Yeah, he was. He was there from uh, the athletic director at USC from nineteen ninety three into twenty ten. That's a long time. A good pension. He earned a good pension. And you know what? USC hasn't been that good since he left. Of course, he was uh, doing all that uh, shenanigans. <laughs> but <laughs> the shenanigans seem to happen a lot of places. At least have one for each. <laughs> oh, we got somebody else on. Is that Brian? Yeah. Must be Brian. It sounds like Brian. Uh, that's Brian. Yeah. Yep, that's me. Yeah, we're just talking about actors and turned football 
football players turned to actors. I I with like Frank Fulman, sports executive. Yeah, it was Frank, and uh, I like Jim Brown. I thought he did. He had some good movies. I like the way Jim Brown put Gloria Steinem in her place. Oh, uh, what do you mean? Which was beneath him, full of sausage. What What are you talking about? You know, Gloria Steinem, remember her, the head yeah. of the women's movement. Yeah, the blonde. Yes, she was. That was she was Jim Brown's girlfriend. Really. We got a referee on this tank. Do you remember that's, Gloria Steinem, Jim Brown? I remember Gloria Steinem. I can't picture her being a uh, 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 being anyone's uh, girlfriend. She's Jim Brown's bitch. Oh, I mean, Jesus. Okay. I, I, she yeah, I don't know. So Brian, Brian's going to have to bail me out on this one. Brian? What's that? Do, do you remember uh, Gloria Steinem and Jim Brown being an item? No, I can't. Maybe well. you were just having a dream of a glorious no, no, hey, and, and <laughs> Jim Brown. I, I don't even have to. I, I don't even have to look this up. If you look it up, you'll see that they were an item, and she I, was. I know that Jim Brown co-starred in a movie with Raquel Welch. Uh, Ice Station Zero. That uh, the one I remember was a, like called a hundred rifles or a thousand. It was a, something rifles. Uh-huh. It was a pretty good movie. Uh, who else? Hundred rifles. One hundred yeah. rifles. Yeah, okay. yeah. I see it. Yeah. yeah, that was that was pretty good. And he was in the Dirty Dozen. That was a great movie. You saw that, right? Oh, that was that was a great. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. That had a whole bunch of whole bunch of uh, stars and later stars. Yeah, he ends up he ends up shooting Telly Savalas when they. They go into that German uh, compound to sabotage it, and yeah. Telly Savalas uh, kind of goes off on the They had a, a young Donald, Donald Southern. Oh, well, every, that, that movie was movie. full of uh, every, so many good actors. Uh, Lee Marvin, of course. Lee Marvin. Lee Marvin, yeah. Charles Bronson. Charles Bronson. Young Charles Bronson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I I can't remember. There's probably a few others. You so, guys were hitting up on movies of 1970 uh, then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, I found one uh, that you might check out if you don't remember or you never seen it. One of the worst movies ever made. Oh yeah. Category. My My Red Breckenridge. I've heard of that. Well, tell me Myra about Myra Breckenridge. Tell, tell me about that. With yeah, Raquel Welch. Jeez, a, yeah. a bad Raquel, Raquel Welch movie. How could that be? How did this happen? Easily, just some bizarro, bizarro story, man. <laughs> did you see that one, Frank? I don't think I've ever seen the full movie, but I've seen bits and pieces. It was bad. Myra Breckenridge. Yeah, yeah, me too. I've seen bits and pieces. Hmm. It got me thinking about it, though, because I saw it on the list of 70 movies. And I said, oh, yeah. That's Just a weird storyline of her undergoing an operation to become a man. And there's <laughs> another guy who plays the man counterpart. I don't know. <laughs> it, it doesn't make a lot of sense, probably. <laughs> Yeah, it's just out there. I saw another good one from 1970 that I don't have a clip for, but it was a good movie, was uh, Ryan's Daughter. Did you ever see that? Ryan's With uh, Robert, Robert Mitchum. Robert Mitchum. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Robert Mitchum, and he gets cuckolded in that movie. Is that what happens in that movie? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a Scottish a little Scottish village, and he's got this nice... You know, beautiful young wife, and he's in kind of an old, aging. Uh, yeah, he's an bo- old guy. He's a boring old aging guy. I don't remember yeah. what his occupation was. Might have been was a school teacher. I don't. I don't know. But, she, but I remember this she, hot she, wife. She has She'd this, walk around in this white negligee. Yeah, she has dark and just with his sexy body. She has this affair with this this soldier that comes into oh, town. Okay, and it's all about how she, how that falls apart, and she gets shamed. Wow. But what a shame! It's just interesting to see what Robert Mitchum is get you know in that role. Big super stud. So, so stud. cuck's a Scottish word. Interesting. And we were just talking about that last week. Cuckold. Yeah, it was big. Well, because we were talking about Roger Goodell. 
Uh, oh. he, he got cucked into this hole. Now he's he's going to be taking a knee on opening day. He's going to be out there taking a knee when the anthem's playing. <laughs> will I, will anybody be standing up? Exactly. <laughs> wrong, I mean, yeah, yeah. That's what just everybody is. Okay. Well, Trump ain't going to watch, I guess, now. <laughs> oh, did he say that? He did. Yep. He oh. did say it. Yep. I don't think I'll be watching it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, he'll probably forget that after the, the season starts. I think oh, he'll, yeah. he'll come around. It's not going to stop me from watching my he'll football. Come around and rejoin the family again, yeah. <sighs> <laughs> so 1970 also had MASH, the movie. Yeah, we yeah. played a clip from that. We also got uh, we also got, uh, we got Butch, Butch Cassidy. And Patton. And Patton, yeah. Uh, of course, yeah, yeah. I was trying to think of what else was I saw. Oh, a movie called Joe. It was uh, Joe interesting one? Joe was a character played the guy that plays the the father of Raymond. And everybody loves Raymond. The guy that played Frankenstein, young Frankenstein. Peter Boyle. Peter Boyle. Mm-hmm. Peter Boyle. Peter Boyle. Oh played yeah, a to- a full on. A full-on redneck laborer. He finds out his uh, daughter is basically it's becoming a hippie, mm. and he don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> a movie for our times. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so she, she joined he'd, Antifa? He'd, he'd be one of those supporters out there with a the MAGA hat on right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure sounds like it. So, uh... Going back to sports, is baseball dead right now in the water? <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry. He's, uh, well, I don't know. They're just uh, money ball. <laughs> Tank, Tank, what do you think is going on with baseball? Are we going to have a season? Well, he does it. It's a big game. <laughs> Baseball will never be played again. Because Rob Manfred has been played to Detroit. He hates baseball. Rob Manfred. Man, Rob Manfred is. He's going to stay in. He's got the Seattle and the chair going, I took it down. I took down Maple Man's American. And he's going to have everyone's shirt. Yay! And he's going, this man is a good guy. Yay! And he's going to have that smuggler gun. And he's going to have a kid in bed. <laughs> well, I guess that, that was a resounding no. Yeah, that's uh, that's never coming back. <laughs> I, I think the owners obviously want to come back, otherwise they'll never make another. Yeah, that was when Max Kellerman said that there shouldn't be baseball. We shouldn't have sports. Look at Liberace. Strike that thing. With a such a new ESPN show. Uh, it's going to be uh, That's a mandatory viewing. Jamil Hill mm-hmm. and Max Kellerman. Mandatory. In which Max Kellerman was the entire show mm-hmm. in chains with a T-shirt saying "I'm sorry," and uh, mm-hmm. Jamil Hill whipped him. Ooh, this is going to be a high-rated show. I can tell already. <laughs> There's going to be mandatory homosexual sex daily. Hmm. And women will have bigger penises than men. <laughs> okay. Jamil uh, Hill is talking about uh, says that any black man that supports the white cause or the doesn't see white people as evil is a traitor to the race. I'm Jamil Hill. I love you, Baruch Pazala. Even we know they're an Uncle Tom. Joanne, I mean. hmm. Yes, he's the one that Jamil Hill would, uh, wrote the book, or wrote an article about her heroes, and her hero is Joanne Chesnard. Chesnard. Who is currently who is currently in Cuba right now, a fugitive. Yeah. For killing a New Jersey cop. Yeah, Chesnard. And said that if he had her right, she'd execute and murder every white baby. Yeah, did, didn't he hijack the plane to get to Cuba, too? Uh, she might have, yeah. Yeah. And that's Jamil mm. Hill's. That's Jamil Hill's uh, hero. Mm. Extraordinary. <clears throat> did, did you see that I coined coined a new term? Ooh, which one? Did you see on my <laughs> website? I put I, I I coined a new term. It's called uh, Cuomo sexuality. 
Oh my! You did see you got up on that. <laughs> yeah, I sent that picture to Frank. Did, did a few you days see the earlier. picture? <laughs> yeah, you know the picture of Cuomo standing naked outside his wife. You know, in his yard. It's yes, yeah, it's another cuck shot. I was suggesting he's <laughs> cucking out there again. You know, she's probably he probably lost a bet to her. Yeah, he had to show his naked ass to her yoga class. It's, it's it's some some people have a sickness of an exhibitionism sickness. But CNN continues to employ the guy, so. Oh, they, I guess he's he's got a, a group of devoted followers. The news media right now is such a joke and such a disgrace. They, 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 there's, there's just nothing good you can say about the news media. There is, they are just the absolute fucking worst. Yes, yes, they are. Well, except for your favorite network, Frank, OAN. <laughs> OAN? <laughs> You watch? Do you watch OAN a lot? They don't go live enough for me. Uh, you need to go live more. Uh, yeah, it's not. It's not. Uh, what well, you like? You you probably like Fox more because it's uh, OAN's got a, it's kind of looks like a low budget operation, but they do have a they do have yeah. Some- yeah that's the only problem with OAN. They need to get they need to get their their act together a little bit more. But they do have a they very. Are- have you seen that anchor? They they have one anchor woman who's really hot. Is she naked? She's this blonde, and she's <laughs> that's naked news. Have you ever seen? You know who this person is, uh, Brian? Is that the OAN one? She, uh, she's she's just she's blonde. She's uh, and you know very Barbie dollish, but she's she's yeah. There's one on OAN mm. that's like that. Hmm. Um, yeah, she's quite a cutie. <laughs> <laughs> Eric's gonna watch That's it. Kind of, uh, I am. Didn't realize personalities. Let's see. check her out. Uh, she's, she's kind of in, intense. Like, about her. very, very hard. She, she doesn't. She doesn't smile a lot because I, I think she wants to be taken seriously. So she comes. She tries to be real tough. Yeah. yeah. I don't see her. Oh, I got a few of them, actually. <laughs> you got what? They've got a couple other ones I see here. Oh. I'm sure there was one that, uh, uh, I just forgot her name. Hey, Frank, um, while well, well, Brian's th- thinking of that, I'm mean to ask you about Camden, New Jersey. Because apparently, a few years back, Camden decided to reform its police department. They they have any luck with that? <laughs> There's nobody living in Camden anymore. Everyone left. Oh. Okay. <laughs> crime, in, crime in Camden was such was so high at one point. Nobody really would, would, would go out. You know. You know what used to happen in Camden? So it was a lockdown. People from Philadelphia. People from Philadelphia went over to Camden, killed people. Left the bodies in Camden. They would never solve the freaking case. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like a theme park for for murderers and and, and thugs. Camden was. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, Camden. Going on vacation. Camden was so. There were like like we were like four four times in five years. The named the most dangerous city in America. Oh, so it makes Newark look really safe, huh? So it's right on the border there with with uh, Pennsylvania? Yeah, it's down by the bridge. There's a bridge that crosses right that right at Camden into Philly. Wow. Yeah, it sounds like a, it's like a dumping ground for Philadelphia. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. You get, yeah. killed, you get killed in Philadelphia and get moved to Camden. Yeah, you get conveniently moved to another state. Moved co- across the state lines. Yeah, well, that sounds illegal to me. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. I mean, Camden, there's nothing good about Camden. Mm-hmm. The, only, the only thing Camden's known for is uh, is uh, Campbell's Soup is there. Oh, okay. Campbell's Soup's in Camden. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Is that just a coincidence? I guess it is. It's just It sounds like it belongs in Camden. I mean, I mean, if it wasn't for Campbell's Soup over there, the, 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 there would be the, nothing I mean, going on in Camden. City down. It, there's nothing there except the uh, Campbell's uh, Soup factory. Hmm. 
and headquarters are there. So it's like the headquarters. And, and, uh, so if you get Camden soup, it's probably from coming from Camden. Mm-hmm. Well, I love Campbell soup. Key chunky, that's good. So I've, I've got a prediction for you, fellows. Uh, in New York City, since Tank is there, because this has what? happened before in history. Well, I, I can remember back in the '70s when this kind of unrest was going on in the cities, and everybody's up protesting and declaring anarchy, or at least creating anarchy in the streets. There was a huge boom to the suburbs. Of people of all walks of life moved out there, including you know the people who just they got away from the cities. And they depend. That's why New York City was, why were they nearing bankruptcy in 1975? In the 70s, yeah. Yeah, because they lost a huge chunk of the tax base in the 60s, the late 60s, because people of all races said, I don't want to be in this environment anymore. I want something more peaceful. They moved out. Mm -hmm. Left the politics to itself. And it really wasn't until the right wing got in there. But I I don't want to make this political. It's just a statement of fact that I can see we're going to have a further depopulation of the cities. And maybe repeat that New York, yeah, they want to keep electing left-wing mayors. They're going to go bankrupt. No, I actually disagree. That that's not going to happen this time. You have no? the uh, can't happen. You have the uh, the hipsters, the hipsters, and, they're too and many of the hipsters actually are are Antifa people. Uh huh. Yeah, but they don't pay taxes, do they? Yeah, How, how's New York going to pay its you bills? Know these, these motherfuckers, these hipsters, these Antifa people, oh, yeah. these chairs people. Uh huh. They want to ban meat. They're all vegans. Yeah, yeah. They're only looking for soy products in uh, Chaz right now. They don't want any meat. I, I, actually, I actually think if they ate a hot dog once in a while, they'd be, they'd, they'd, they'd be, they wouldn't be so fucking <laughs> like, like revolutionary. They're about ready to start a fucking civil war. Oh, yeah. They're, they're protein deficient. It hurts their brain. Well, Frank, you could you could really cause a problem by uh, f- wheeling in a bunch of uh, food trucks and and hot dog carts into hot the uh, carts. into the Chaz zone. Bacon that would probably that would probably ca- spark a major food fight. <laughs> <laughs> food fight. Yeah, here's one thing I don't like, Frank. If this was in your neighborhood, would wouldn't you be like walking in there right now and doing that? Like he'd be in their face, wouldn't you? If they were in your neighborhood or within walking uh. distance. Wouldn't you? I'd, 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 go, uh, I'd go out there, and I'd buy him a crave case. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh. if, if this was oh, within what? driving distance of me, I'd be in their face right now. <laughs> Wouldn't you, Chap Dog? I, I mean, I would, but then again, people don't want to... People don't want to get hurt. I mean, that's the thing. Well, they don't have the right to hurt me at all. I can walk in. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen uh, I to people, but you got to... Yeah, you got to do something. I mean... Yeah, they don't have the right to stop me from my liberty from walking down. But I, I'm, st- I just don't even know right. what it's like living there. You know, are you getting your mail? Are you? I wouldn't deliver the mail. You don't have. I don't. To. I wouldn't think you were, but and that would be a I'm major. The that would be a major problem. Zip code there anymore? And um. Well, I, I, I heard the I heard that the mayor of uh, Seattle is about to. Uh, What? You keep hanging us, Frank, yeah. Is <laughs> uh, about to uh, and recognize him as a uh, independent nation. Oh, now you're pulling our dick. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would, you can't do that, you? first of all. They don't have that power. It's, you know what? I, I'm half of me saying you're probably right. You're not pulling my leg. She, so. she could name Chaz a borough of Seattle, though. <laughs> <laughs> but no, they, they, that's not their demands. That's not part of their demand. These people made demands. I know. I was thinking of posting those demands. There were like twenty of them or something. Yeah, and they're like free, free education. Was one of them bring back the supersonics? <laughs> <laughs> it is now. I'd like that. <laughs> yeah, bring back the supersonics. That's number one. Just do that, and we'll forget everything else. Well, here's the thing: if, if you want to tear, if you want to defund police departments. They change that because they are social artifices that promote uh, continued racism. Then you know what? We also need to shut down the public fucking school system because that school system is a result of yeah, it's an artifice that keeps creating people who are entrenched in racism. You know, shut that down too. In fact, what else do liberals work for? Shut down all the stuff they work for. So we'll get we'll kick them out of the universities because we'll shut them all down, and we'll have to we'll start fresh dust all these people out i mean all the cities are having all the riots right now by the way you know note to democrats 
These are your cities. Your policies have been in place for how many decades now? You have majority rule over the control of these places and the states as well. And you're the ones who are upset with the status quo. It's your, I mean, it's our status quo, but it's your status quo. These are your ideas that are breaking down. And don't come and say, well, the, re- the way we solve it is by destroying America. No. <laughs> no Detroit. No New okay. York. No no California. That's not the answer. No. Because your policies failed. Okay. let's you know, Pick yourself up, dust your stuff off, but do it within the regulations. Do it within the framework of our Constitution, please. That goes to the mayor of Seattle as well. You know, come on, bitch. Do your job. Uh, and I predict this is going to be something you're going to hear soon. They're going to be calls to get rid of the Constitution. That's next. Oh, of course. You're right, Tech. Yeah. I mean, if there aren't people already saying such mm-hmm. lunacy. Well, that's them's fighting words. That is. I, that's when we stop being nice. I, I don't know. They can just amend it uh, as many times as they want. It takes time to even do that. But that take, that's a procedure. That is. Look how long it is. There's also... An it's amendment It's too difficult to amend the Constitution. They're they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna get rid of the constitution. You watch. Yeah, well, the the army's gonna have something to say about that. Man, look at, look at He really swings an axe like a girl, doesn't he? He's a sledgehammer, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, He's yeah. taking it to a piano. Well, you know what? Uh, you know if, if if things continue to go the way they're going, mm-hmm. we are going to see a civil war. There's no doubt about it. Oh, you're right. Yeah, actually, Tank, for, for this is one time where I'm going to agree with you that if they continue, I don't think they will, but if they continue, yeah, we're on that course right here. We're going to have two intractable positions. Because this, Democrat, this, this isn't the Democratic Party I've ever known. This is the Democratic, Democratic Party that I grew up with. You know, at the end of the day, they were, they're, 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 yeah, they're, they're Americans as much as anybody is. But not this talk I hear now. Who are these people that infiltrated that party that are talking about, yeah, like our anti-Constitution or ideas that are in conflict with the Constitution? Mm. This is nonsense. Well, I guess the next six months are going to be very interesting. So yeah, let's see what happens. There isn't enough dope in the world to smoke. I just, it just seems like you could have an incident like you had last night happen every other week. Well, pretty much was. Yeah, black men being, that. You know, um that was just being shot at drive throughs because they parked the car in the drive thru. <laughs> well, what, I mean, what, a, what, exactly, what exactly <laughs> happened? <laughs> the guy, the guy, so drunk, the guy, the, the, guy, the, the guy had his car parked in the drive thru so nobody could get through the drive thru. Yeah. What an asshole. Well, I, I know. And he was drunk too. That's why he so, couldn't drive. So, That's why he parked it there. So the, the cops show up and they try to. They, <laughs> He fell asleep in the drive-thru. Yeah, well, because he was drunk. How the fuck does that even happen? Because he was drunk. <laughs> How do you fall asleep in a drive-thru? <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 yeah, he, failed the, he failed the test. They managed to test him. Well, they woke him up, yeah. And then he started wrestling with the cops. <laughs> he looked like he was awfully energetic when he was wrestling with the cops. He woke up pretty fast. Well, he got a hold of one of their tasers. And he threatened a cop with the taser. And the cop answered back with a gun. No, but that was when he was running away, wasn't it? Oh yeah, he was fully energized then. <laughs> but I'm just saying when they had he their, was awake. they had the fight, the the two cops couldn't couldn't subdue him, you know. And well, I guess that's was, that's all this affirmative action and, hiring and, and hiring people, small people to do the job, which we used to have standards. We hired bad big the people cops so they couldn't do the job happen. right there. Remember get, that tank when they used to have hiring standards for the body size for policemen, and they were men, by the way. Because women would just get slapped away unless they could meet the size. Well, these were two men, right? I don't know. Were they men? Did you see the film, Brian? They were men. Okay. Yeah, I saw it. They were, they were girly men, but they were well, They were obviously not big enough. <laughs> they couldn't subdue the guy, but that's not their problem. It's the, you know, what they should have been. They should be doing desk jobs. Yeah. Like a detective or something like that. So he, he, he ran there. away after that. He ran, runs away with the tasers kind of pointing at him as he's running, and then they shot him. Is that what? I, that's exactly what happened, right? Apparently. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he pointed a taser at him. It's one of those weird things. It's like, oh, well, he threatened him, but it was with a taser. They knew it was a taser, <laughs> so mm, shooting yeah. him probably wasn't a good idea. <laughs> they should have. 
if they were going to shoot him, they should have shot him in the foot or something or done something that would likely not kill him. Yeah, but it's it's difficult but to do I that. I don't yeah, I think you're I think Those the cop, aren't the cop is probably technically justified if somebody's dangerous and they've been resisting arrest and they're drunk and they got a, a weapon like a taser and they're you know it's it's a, it's a dangerous situation you I think you're allowed to stop them. Well, Chav dog oddly enough under the law that we as we knew it a month ago, you're 100% correct. Today I'm not so sure. Well, to Yeah, and it's they, like, you know, obviously the pressure and concern of what's been going on that the uh, police chief resigned. Yeah, and then the well, uh, I didn't the like Atlanta that. Police chief resigned. Like, why the hell is the police why chief? Bail why is she resigning immediately? Because like, something that, was wrong, or because yeah, that's I don't just get to that. me. That was face, just <laughs> she didn't want to face the uh, aftermath. That's cowardly. That's just cowardly. I think. Well, I hired a woman to do the job too. Maybe that's I mean, what? Oh, as soon as <laughs> some, as soon as something gets gets rough and a little scary, you just resign. Well, a girl does. That's pretty girly. Okay. Don't be sexist, okay? Uh, I'm in trouble, Brian. I'm one. I'm one chromosome away from being a girl. So, okay, okay. Here was, you know, let's be very. There's your female support. But, yeah, but I just I didn't like that. Okay, that she single. just re- resigned. You know. Well, I'm, I'm interested in hearing the story behind that. Yeah, but because you it must be a story. She wasn't an idiot. She was a smart lady. You don't know why, she, other than the, the publicity. And, and up she, until now, it was a very well run police department. It's by just. The way. I think it just seems like the attitude is now that if anything happens, the police are to blame, and everybody's everybody's fucked because they were part of that organization. Well, there was a you know the two black gentlemen who recently died up here in in, in uh, L.A. and they were hanging. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I know. What? Oh, you haven't heard the story? Yeah, there were two black gentlemen, not at the same time. One was uh, a few days ago, and one was on May thirty first. But they were caught hanging, and and uh, it's not. A, it could have been suicide. It could have been lynch and murder. We don't know. Okay. Well, what do you want me to say about that? Well, the question's just being raised here. That there's people saying this was murder, even when there was no evidence. Yeah, it they're yeah, they're ripping up. Uh, they're saying yeah, they're just questioning any out. any black death suspicious like that, especially. <laughs> That is kind of odd, I gotta admit. But I, but then on the other hand, you know, when was the last time somebody was you know hung? That I saw a story where a black man was hung, and it was a lynching uh, in California, I, in Palmdale. I don't, <laughs> you know, Brian. When was the last time you you saw a news story like that? I don't think it's been suppressed. Uh, like never. I can't. Yeah, I can't really think of anything. Yeah, they ain't hanging black men in, decade, in Palmdale. In this decade, anyway. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Last guy I heard hung himself was uh, Epstein, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He hung himself. <laughs> <laughs> that's the official story. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he was on suicide watch, so the uh, guards stood there and watched him spit suicide. Yep. <laughs> I thought that's what it meant. <laughs> suicide us. watch means we watch him do it. Watch him do it. Yeah. <laughs> we get bonus for that. We right? watch. <laughs> he did it. We watch. <laughs> That's the craziest, but I, I again, I, I will have to give the award for being for being closest to the pin <laughs> to Frank Fleming because we're coming up on June fifteenth, and and he may very well. I don't know, but it, it, we could have complete anarchy in the next seven days, and and maybe Chaz was just the beginning of it. it was just the the uh, the tip of the iceberg, as they say. Well, and, but- and we'll have complete anarchy by the fifteenth, and meat will be banned. It'll be everything Frank said was going to happen months ago. Do you think they're going to force me to change the name of this show to the Chaz Dog? Ch- oh, you, you dog. bet they will. <laughs> the Chaz Dog. Well, yeah, the band, I, that, that's going to be in 10 years. That's going to take 10 years to get done. Oh. Yeah, can you imagine going to get your hot dog? You have to get like a vegan dog. What's that place in New Jersey that uh, that burns the, that boils the dogs? Uh, Rutz Hut. Yeah, imagine oh. Rutz Hut's has to it's only vegan dogs in there now <laughs> <laughs> they'll be forcing vegan dogs down your throat like, like tell me New Jersey tell me the people at Rutz Hut they'd burn the place down before they did that wouldn't they probably <laughs> <laughs> you know that'd be kind of cool you, you could do I wonder if they'd be into you could grab some of your friends there who have um, their cameras and do like a red dawn at Rutz Hut 
where it gets turned into a, a vegan place and you know the, the, maybe like a Russian landing or something. Some communists or vegans take it over. And then they burn it <laughs> and they uh, all start roasting hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, I tell you, dude, the, 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 you know what the problem is? We were talking about the 70s and everyone had like a, all these movies that they made back then. Yeah, they're like 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 people took chances in the seventies when they made movies. I mean, sometimes they were good, sometimes they were bad. Uh, uh, but but uh, you're just free. I mean, I mean, what we got now is this 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 is unending, just political mm. correctness. Mm. Where, where yeah. nobody has has nobody has a sense of humor anymore. Well, everyone is looking to be offended. <laughs> Everyone's looking to be offended. Everyone's looking to be offended. So naturally, well, you, you, you get a situation where everyone well, is afraid of the COVID. You're you're stuck inside. You're isolated. You have no sports, no entertainment, nothing. Yes, you can't go out drink can't go out with your friends, so you just got a bunch of pressure valves, and everything's about to fucking explode. I think that explains yeah. a lot of the looting. In fact, I just remember, as we come up to the break here, just wanted to say that it, the looting coincided with the end of the lockdown in terms of stores. Their stores were still closed, and I bet you a lot of the people that were looting would have been quite happy to go have gone in there two or three days before with money and bought the stuff they were taking. But we're just going in to get it because, you know, when was the last time you bought a shirt or a pair of frickin' pants? Like, never. Like, two months ago. Yeah, they were just going in there to get stuff because we've been deprived. It was like shopping. Well, they can buy it online. Well, yeah, but it's, it's a store experience. You know, I can't <laughs> buy course, pants unfortunately, online. Unfortunately, can't, you can't loot an online store. Uh, yeah, I can't, no, I can't <laughs> do that. No, I... All right. Well, uh, let's go to break, and uh, we'll be back with the second half, and... Uh, yeah, Frank, if you can stick around, Frank, that'd be great. I'm, I'm going to do a little karaoke in honor of uh, Crackling Wendy's. <laughs> <laughs> Crackling Wendy's karaoke coming up. Yeah. Second hour of the Chab Dog Sports Talk Show. We're told that greatness is exceptional when it should be expected. You choose every day to live your life intentionally. Without apology for how bright your light may shine. So go be great. Go be brilliant. Go be you. Go defy life. The defy life movement is one that speaks to each of us in its own way. The defy life gear speaks to us all by reminding us that one size does not fit all. Visit defylifegear.com to get fitted for greatness. The Law Office of Brandon S. Chapman, serving clients in Southern California with transactional legal services since 2007. We handle general corporate, outside counsel type work, drafting and negotiating a wide variety of business and commercial contracts, including non-disclosure agreements, independent contractor agreements, and employment agreements. Our experience includes working with public and private companies and involves a broad range of industries, including healthcare, consumer products, real estate, and high technology. Mr. Chabner has over 20 years of legal experience, having worked for some larger national firms and serving as general counsel for a multi-million dollar private company here in Southern California before starting his own legal practice. His educational credentials include a law degree from UCLA, where he was on law review, undergraduate degree at Yale, where he graduated in magna cum laude, and an MBA from Harvard Business School. Other areas of focus for Chabner Law include press release and business plan editing, pre-litigation matters, and debt and mortgage resolution work. You can contact us at 310-698-0740 and at bchabner at chabnerlaw.com. Blake Chabner accepted he was 100% right. He can take all comers. Execute.
Seatbelt reporter for safety violations. in Pearl Harbor Someone here. Someone just said Pearl Harbor's being attacked. Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor. Pick and feel Pearl here. Pearl Harbor's being attacked. Pearl Harbor's being attacked. <laughs> <laughs> Pearl Harbor's being attacked. Oh, we're caught so flat through. Oh. oh. And right. we're back. <sighs> so we're back. That was Tora, Tora, Tora from 1970, yeah. Chap Dog. Yes. Mm-hmm. Another great mm-hmm. movie from 1970. I think it's one of my favorite movies of all time. Happened on a Sunday morning, right? I did. Pearl, Pearl Harbor. I did. It was a Sunday morning. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, you know what's coming up? The uh, Here's another movie from 1970 uh, and something that uh, harkens back to that's happening in two weeks. It's It was the, um, you saw the movie Little Big, Little Big Man? Dustin Hoffman? Oh, yeah. Little Big Man. That yeah, was 1970. Oh. And... Um, they, that was in, the, in that movie. There's a scene with uh, uh, Little Bighorn, the Battle of Little Bighorn, when Custer went down. The, the great, you know, the greatest uh, def- Indian victory over the uh, United States. Uh, yeah, Custer's last stand. Yeah, lot. yeah, I'm familiar with the, his story. How does this tie into the movie? Uh, well, in the movie, there's a there's a scene. They they have a a battle scene from that because he, he's, set back he's supposed to have he, I guess he survived that battle right uh-huh. is, is that am I correct Brian Who yeah. yeah yeah the guy in Little Bighorn the the, the, the guy in um, Little Big Man Dustin Hoffman's character mm-hmm. so Dustin Hoffman survives so, Little, Big, Little Bighorn was uh, J- June 25th 1876 and uh, I saw I saw a, a clip from that last night on YouTube, which was a, like a reenactment, and it was pretty cool. That it showed how they apparent the story set goes that, that Custer was the last 
you know, there were like a hundred of these soldiers, U.S. soldiers that were surrounded by all these Indians and they formed their circle, you know, and that's what they did. And, and the, the soldiers just kept getting picked off one by one. And so finally the only one left is Custer. And and uh, they really scalped him. And then and I thought that the no, chief, not the that. chief of the Indians, offered to let him go, but he he didn't want to be the he didn't want to be spared. So uh-huh. they 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 took care of him too at the end. But they they, they t- yeah they took his scalp literally. Did they? Yeah. Okay. With, with a, a a hatchet. Okay. <laughs> that was, a little off. That's that's what they did. They deep in, in battles. Him. That's what they did. The other. That's scalp. why they call them savages. I mean, it's, it's how they fought. I, don't uh, I was actually at Custer's, uh, the battleground in the area. I camped at his army's campsite. Oh. Uh, once in the hills there. Gee, where are we? what state are, is that? Are any of the uh, structures there that they used? No, no, no. Uh, they didn't have any structures. They was, it was a bivouac. Oh. I, I rolled in there. In fact, I had to cross a, a shallow river well. to... Well, the, 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 the battle of Little, Little Bighorn was in in Wyoming. So I, I don't say know. Wyoming, but it, it, it was Wyoming. Was it Wyoming? It? No, I don't think it was Wyoming. It Maybe was, uh, was, was one of the Dakotas? South Dakota? I like the, there's the Black Hills in South Dakota. Yeah, it was South Dakota. Yeah, because it was near, closer to... Yeah. Uh, to um, South Dakota was, I think, where the Sioux Nation was. Sure. Well, there were plenty of Indians there. <laughs> Somebody, yeah, I couldn't even tell you what, what they were part of. So Brian, we digressed a little bit, just a little, but that does tie into a 1970s, another 1970s movie. Well, 1970s. Speaking of Indians, that's when the um, the AIM, the American Indian Movement, took over Alcatraz. Ah, oh. yeah. I saw you were talking about that this week, weren't you, Chad? Doc? Okay, you know that that was on the uh, somebody was. Were you talking about it, or Brian was? Somebody was I wasn't. mentioned Brian? that was Brian talking about. Somebody it? mentioned that. That Alcatraz. Oh, my friend Saint Nun, uh, Jack Nun. Jack he was Nunn. on a guest on the show. All or none. Pointed out that um, that this does he this have a dirty habit? Happened before with uh, <laughs> does uh, Sam Nun have a dirty habit when when um, an Indian nation, an Indian group, uh, American Indians uh, took over Alcatraz. Yes, the American Indian movement. Aim. And 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 I don't know how long that occupation last lasted. It's probably. No, oh, a few months. I'm guessing a month. Yeah, it wasn't that long. Maybe, maybe less though. It was several months actually. Was it? Was there a military, like a military style uh, pushback and take retaking of it, or did they? Did they, they just leave? They left through peaceful negotiations. Oh, did they have demands? Yeah, they wanted. Uh... <laughs> Do we know what their demands were? Yeah, <laughs> we want a casino vegan, and uh... <laughs> vegan vegan sandwiches. No, we want, we want more, more booze. Yeah, more booze. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, casinos, booze. Uh, yeah. What else can we get? I don't know. I'm. I'm. I think it's probably bad to speculate. So, oh, chat dog. That's horrible. That's more horrible. Uh, than that. Nineteen seventy. Video C. I sent you. Sorry. What are you? What are you looking that's at? When the Apollo thirteen situation is. Yeah, that's right. Apollo thirteen. Oh, oh, they made the movie about that, right? Yeah, with uh, Tom Cruise. Yeah. Not Tom Cruise. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's. Gump. I, I do and, like. Uh, they had, that a, movie. They had a mm-hmm. double back and come home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, Tom Hanks. So on on May fourth, nineteen seventy, was the Kent State shootings. <clears throat> As Neil Young sang, four dead in Ohio, Ohio. Kent oh, State University, Ohio. and uh, so four great were killed, so great nine wounded <clears throat> by Ohio National Guardsmen because they're protesting against uh, the incursion into Cambodia. But back to a, a time of protest, a time of innocent people being shot and killed. So here's another time in our history when innocent people were being shot and killed. Wasn't I saying this? That, that this I think and these I said are whites. This, <laughs> and, like, and she didn't have a prior criminal record, nor did she serve time didn't either. Didn't I say way. this a couple of weeks ago that we're going back to the 1970s, like the early 70s? Well, yeah, I guess that's why we're doing it all these years, aren't we? Yeah, I, I know. I'm we're doing like 72. Uh-huh. Yeah, we did 72. Yeah. And now we're doing 70 here after a little excursion to the 80s there for a couple of shows. Yeah. Well, Brian, uh, we, uh, we can talk about. We didn't talk about the baseballs that much. Um, that was the Brooks Brooks Robinson series, right? Yeah, Brooks Robinson over the um, Reds. Well, over the Reds, yes, it's an a. yeah. That was uh, that was a good series. I believe that was. Let me 
think about that. I'm pretty sure that was a Oriole team. Hmm. That was a good team. That was a really good team, wasn't it? Looking at him on that last day filled us all. 108 wins and 54 losses. 108. Oh, wow. Powerful team. Right after Cause they had the 420 game winners on that team, right? I believe so. That's what I was, uh, what I was thinking. Of. I'm pretty sure they did. Yeah. Third base, Mikey said one umpire. What an exhibition. Let's see what it says there. He's got a lifting weight. <laughs> Up there, there. <laughs> Beethoven. <laughs> Is he easy to mix them up, you know? <laughs> so what are you finding, Brian? Ooh, looks like uh, What is that stuff? Oh, green, it looks like green, green, green oatmeal. Yeah. That really looks disgusting. Yeah, we're watching a, uh, a montage. This is great, Chad. It takes a lot of... We really haven't been doing our job narrating what's been going on. That was a triple play, wasn't it? Yeah. No, we were watching the monkeys. Serious performance. I just feel like Brooks Robinson. A week or two weeks and never get a chance to do something. I'm really glad that somebody's in the Hall of Fame like that. That not it's not a shortstop or a second baseman, but another player who's largely a defensive specialist. Uh, but he, he was a good offensive player. But he was he was better defensively. I mean, he was just an amazing defender. Frank Robinson, two homers. Paul Blair hit 474. And slugger Dave McNally, a grand slam. That was the pitcher. Their pitcher hit a grand slam. Wow. And Ironically, he was a one week of the, earlier, he was one of the 20 Mike game winners. Playar had hit a slam in the American League another Championship Series. In 1970, they only had three. Oh, it was just 70, it was three. It was another year they had four. Yeah. Oh, okay. The three were uh, Jim Palmer, Dave McNally, and, and Pat Dobson. Mike Cuellar. Oh, it was Cuellar. Cuellar is another, another consideration for the Hall. I don't think he, he probably didn't have enough wins, though, right? Yeah, he came a little short wins. Good winning percentage, though, and won 20 games. Several times. Uh, well, I'll have to check that out. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, they had they Orioles had a really good team. Frank Robinson, Boog Powell, Paul Blair. Paul Blair was just an incredible fielder. This is Evil Knievel and, and the uh, Evil Knievel yeah, shock absorbing next, stunt cycle. The next year, the Orioles did it seventy one. The next year they did it. 71 they had the four game. Oh. 71 they had the 420 game. Yeah. And that's when they lost to the Pirates in the World Series. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah. That was the same three pitchers plus Pat Dobson. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, um. Let's roll Evil Knievel. You want to roll Evil Knievel? You can make him do wheelies. Nice. Backstands. <laughs> Even midair somersaults. And for that big jump, here's Evil. Did I tell you about my bicycle? That that ditch. A, I tried to pop wheelies on my bicycle. It was a uh, Evil Knievel sold separately uh, or with the Evil Knievel stunt stingray? cycle from I know Ideal. I, like. I never had one, but I had friends. Yeah, Schwinn Schwin Stingray. It's a, it's a yeah. very popular bike. Oh, it was a, yeah, it was a desired well, bike. I a lot of kids like that. Uh, that's all right. No, I was married to Kate and Ashley. I don't want to turn her off. Oh. Let's see. Just the other day, somebody somebody posted this on my sports route, too. But on June the 12th, a gentleman uh, took the mound against the San Diego Padres. 
And it was later revealed that he was high on LSD. <laughs> Oh, oh guy, yeah, the yeah. Doc Ellis game. Yeah, that's a classic. Yeah, yeah. That, that was that we talked about that. The Doc Ellis threw a no hitter and he was on on drugs. We had a lot of fun with that a few years ago. Yeah, he walked. A he few said he days. regrets it only. He regrets it because it robbed him of his memory of one of his greatest moments. <laughs> he can watch it on TV. <laughs> it's okay. He doesn't remember anything. Yeah, he just he'd like to get that back if he could, and he could have. If he could have done that all the time, yeah. Yeah, he said he never did it again. He was more of a speed guy, but he said that it was all a total accident because he thought it was Thursday, not Friday. Mm. So he popped some LSD at his girlfriend's house around noon, and she came in about two o'clock and said, "Hey, you're starting, you're starting the game tonight." <laughs> <laughs> And he just did it. I mean, he's like he was on autopilot. He had no worries. It's just he did. A, he did walk eight people. Which is yeah, crazy. he was in a zone though. Literally, Doc yeah. Ellis. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Literally, zone. All right. Well, uh, what do you want to do now? You want to do the? Uh, you want to do the karaoke? Right, is your voice? Are your vocal cords warmed up enough for it? Uh, they'll never be perfect, but All right. uh, we're gonna we're gonna hear a little uh, Neil Diamond from 1970. This is Crackling Rosie. Yeah, but it's not. But it's not Rosie. It's uh, Crack Crackling our, Wendy's. There we are, Crackling Wendy's. No, no, that's they're, that's they're in bad taste. Now. I can't do that. Oh, but all right, all right. We're gonna have... feel free to sing along. Ah, Crackling Rosie, get on board. We're gonna ride till there ain't no more to go Taking it slow Lord, don't you know Have me a time with a poor man's lady Hitching on a twilight train Ain't nothing here that I can to take along Maybe a song Sing what I want Need to say please to no man for a happy time tune. Oh, I love my rosy child. You got the way to make me happy. You and me, we go in style. Cracklin Rose, you're a store-bought woman. You make me sing like a guitar humming. Hang on to me, girl, a song keeps running on. Play now, play now, play now, my baby. Cracklin' Rose makes me smile. Girl, if it lasts for an hour, that's all right. It's fine. We got all night. Set the world right. Find us a dream that don't ask no questions, yeah. All right, one more of these. And we'll oh, I love my rosy child. You got the way to make me happy. You and me, we go in style. Cracklin' Rose, you're a store bought woman. You make me sing like a guitar humming. So hang on to me, girl. Our song keeps running on. Play it now, play it now, play it now, my baby. Yeah, that's enough. All right. Girl didn't, for the last hour. I didn't realize yeah. how much of an ad for Viagra this was. <laughs> that could be. That could be used. Yeah. It's four hours for longer to see a purposes. doctor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He is singing about a woman too. So. That's that's one of my favorite Neil Diamond songs, mm. you know. But it's got that you can really get into it with it going deep in your voice, you know. It's uh, quite remarkable, actually. You, know, you realize what the range it encompasses. Yeah, because yeah, it goes pretty it high and then it goes way down. Yeah, it's not as easy as it seems. All right, Brian, we're back. We're back. <laughs> Do you a uh, karaoke? I, I don't really see you as much of a karaoke. Um. Uh, I used to do it if you get a few drinks in me. There you go. <laughs> well, I don't have any drinks in me, but I have some coffee and a few other things. 
Yeah, uh, coffee and reruns of the monkeys. Uh, yeah, we've been watching the monkeys the monkey for like the last today. two hours. I've never seen this many monkeys. That was a weird. That was a weird show we were watching with all those bodybuilders. Well, speaking of acid. I think the boys were doing some <laughs> producing that. that show where <laughs> like uh, it, was it was just, legal then, by the way, too. It's not making a whole lot of sense, but it's kind of fun to watch. Uh huh. Yeah. You like the monkeys? You ever watch them? Oh, I love the monkeys. Oh yeah, yeah. I just remember the hey with the monkeys. Some people say the monkeys. They really what got me seri- more seriously. Tongue and cheek into rock and roll music. <laughs> uh-huh. About the age when I uh, was, you know, music became a thing. Uh-huh. You know, kind of moved on from right. children's music. Well, here, here's a mainstream. Here's a 1970s question for you. Okay, uh, what Doors album came out in 1970? You can get, you can play that. Yeah. You remember what's what album came out from the Doors in 1970? 1970 was not uh, yeah. was not the LA woman. No, it was the one before. It was a, this was one of the songs on the album. You know this song? Oh yeah, yeah. Still get the album though, yeah. Peace Frog is the name of the song. Uh, yeah. We're doing ass. Yeah. Peace Frog. Yeah. yeah. We could, yeah, use, like LSD we could use a peace frog right now. You smell LSD, I suppose. The album cover has a picture of the doors on it, and there's a sign in front of, that Jim's holding. It says rooms $25. $25? Is that what no, it says? Two dollars and fifty cents and up. But now you're just giving it away. Oh, Marston Hotel. Yeah, Marston I had Hotel. to give it to him. I mean, because he wasn't getting it. He needed a hit, right? All right. Well, yeah. Yep. Is that, is that password? No, you're the other game. Match, match game. Yeah. That that album had a bunch of really good songs on it. Do you, do you remember some of the other ones? Uh, there was one called "Waiting for the Sun." Yes. That's a yeah. Great, great song. And uh, I like "Land Ho." That's another one on there. And then, of course, the Roadhouse Blues. Yeah. Everybody likes that one. This morning, and I got myself a beer. Yeah. Future's uncertain, and the end is always near. Let roll, let it roll. All night long. Yeah, this this beats memorizing. We could do a new new show up opening this. Uh, I know. I did an ad they for mentioned, years ago. He mentions New Haven in this song. And Venice as well. It's coming up. Here we go. Blood in the streets in the town of New Haven. Blood stains the roots and the palm trees of Venice. Blood in my Summer. Let's be the brain to chop off the finger. You just see him walking on the beach. Let him be born in the best of a nation. Yeah, I could. I mean, blood is the rose of mysterious you. Mistake him for all the other people like him I see walking along there today. Yeah, blood in the streets is such a have a good friend. I, okay, well, I just say I had a good friend that stayed in the Morrison Hotel in the. Uh, George Hotel or something. Oh, yeah, was in yeah, I'm not a, and I was in this room and it, it, there's there's graffiti all over the wall. Yeah. And I was looking at it thinking, I wonder if Jim Morrison wrote any of this. It's, it's pretty it's a pretty pretty amazing experience going to that room. Brian, you have any intel on the Morrison Hotel on La Cienega? No, I just heard of it. Badass car. But yeah. Don't know much more about that. Yeah, as much as Chab Dog said is is uh, some new. I used to have a picture of it on my phone. I don't know if I can dig it up. I'll, if I can, I'll I'll put it up there. I think I have that picture of it. I've got it on my phone next to that picture of <laughs> AOC, but you already saw her. <laughs> <laughs> you like that picture of AOC? There's, there's a song called Blue Sunday on that album. Oh, Blue Sunday, yes. Uh-huh. That's a great song. 
It's a not, it's not a song that a lot of people uh, know because it wasn't played on the radio at all. Yeah, I got it here. That's hilarious. Yeah, you can post that. I, I, I sent that picture to you. Yeah, Daddy doesn't live here anymore. Oh, a book about this. divorce. Ooh, look at this actor. Hay. This guy. Where have you yeah. seen him before? Oh, jeez, he's a character actor. He, from 60s he was in. TV. He was in Bonnie and Clyde. He was the father. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah, isn't that a good one? <laughs> Chab dog savant. He pulls it out of his ass. It's like that's incredible. Yeah, yeah he was. Yeah. Huh. I don't know his name, but he was he was he was the guy. He was D B uh or not D well who was the name of the actor that played C W po uh C W Moss? Because that guy just died recently. Did he? Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, I digress. Mm-hmm. What about that? <laughs> the Clinton Gore uh, stars and bars from nineteen ninety two picture going around. Uh, when you saw the hairdo that uh, uh, Pelosi and yeah, that was cute. And Schumer, uh, Pelosi and Schumer were wearing the uh, the scarves. Do, do you know anything about the meaning of these scarves they were wearing this week? It must be some kind of African thing, right? Yeah. Do you see the caption on that though? No. Is that trick photography? No, that's that's a real picture. Actually, on Schumer, it looks like what he's wearing looks like a talus. Yeah. <laughs> But, but it, it's somehow the the um, it's an African talus. It's an African talus. Yeah, yeah, that's that's very yeah. creative. <laughs> and then they they bowed for eight minutes, and, you know, mm. for as long as George Floyd was down. And then they got up and and uh, well, then they had trouble getting back up again because some of them were stuck in that position. Which I I'd be if I had to kneel down for eight minutes too. So oh here this mm. is a picture of Huntington Beach of a bar restaurant. The other day, see oh, everyone all next to each other without masks, looking normal. Yeah, that doesn't look that crowded either. It's reasonable. No, that was and that was Friday. That was Friday at a bar. So I was, so uh, how are things looking your way, Brian? Because I was just showing Chab Dog a picture of uh, the social on in Huntington Beach. It's a bar restaurant, and I was there on Friday and Friday afternoon. Yeah, five o'clock, and everyone's just chilling out inside, outdoors, sitting at the bar, drinking. No masks, no nothing anywhere. It's just like business as usual. It was fun. You got that going? I on? heard the bars are open, uh, but gosh, you know, there's there's not a lot of bars here. There's a biker bar mm. down the way. Really? But you, you, you live in that yeah, kind of neighborhood. No huh? a biker bar. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, are you? Yeah, uh, I you, remember this is this is this is right off the uh, ten freeway on your way to the desert. Yeah, Brian's mm-hmm. in the middle of. Uh, are you in the Mojave? Area. This is rural America. Not the Mojave. I'm in the, well, I don't know what they call it. They call it the Banning Pass. And uh, it's like where, uh, it's like the last major, well, it's the last, yeah, the last major town before you head to Palm Springs. Oh, okay. So the, the pass down into the desert there. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Thank goodness you're not in the Mojave. Yeah. You know what I'm talking no, about. No, 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 no. Yeah, I know Mojave. Yeah, it's just like it's tweaker heaven. I mean, they're everywhere. Mm-hmm. I mean, not, and they're just, oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. no disrespect, but they're nuts, not so people. I mean, they're just, it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're very diff- different people. Yeah, you have really. a biker bar here. But then there's people, um, oh, it's, it's kind of like bars. really relaxed um, as far as the restrictions, the mass mm-hmm. things are not mandatory, just recommended. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because that's here in San Bernardino. I didn't County, see right? a lot of businesses closed here, to be honest with you, except the obvious. Mm-hmm. But you know, mostly we got uh, stores around here that were stayed open. Hmm. Yeah. 
<clears throat> yeah. Another, another reason to leave the city. Um, so. Yeah. yeah. I even had my uh, screen. I had a, got a nice new sliding screen door installed a couple, uh, last month during the midst of all of this. They were still working. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know, plumbers and, and trades people were still uh, still working here too. They never stopped. Home builders never stopped. I never saw any. Yeah, of that. the homes. Yeah, they did down, down, down the homes. way. They're yeah. building a new a giant track. Yeah, they kept going. Yep. Yeah, they kept anybody here either renovating or, or there's fr fresh construction down the street to tear down. Uh, that just kept on going. There's, they didn't stop them at all. It was really quiet, though, traffic-wise, for a good long time. Just people weren't going anywhere. Yeah, same here. But last, over the last two or three weeks, uh, definitely it's back to normal now. Like Everyone's coming to the beach now. They're driving down here. Okay, I got another one I just spotted. That guy. Yeah. The guy with the gun? Yeah. He was in Cool Hand Luke. He was in the one. He was. He something. was one of the prisoners that. Uh, yeah. I forgot his. He was like the flunky for uh, George, the George Kennedy character. Uh huh. Yeah. Now I feel much better. Cause yeah. It ha you knew you knew it from somewhere. It's like a lot of times I I, I that that connection gets mm -hmm. triggered, but I can't name it. It's too obscure. But th I, I can. De that's definitely a case. Yeah, we're, this is another monkeys episode here. And is, they're like the Jed Clampett family. The, yeah, they're they're playing off of the uh, belly oh, yeah. Beverly Hillbillies. Beverly Hillbillies, right? yeah, but they're not in Beverly Hills. But <laughs> but they're doing a pretty good job. Oh yeah, it looks like Ellie Mae. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> he looks more like a beach bum than he oh, does. Look at Clampett. Uh, just glancing through the sports yeah. PGA's money tour uh, money leader. Oh, yeah, the plane in nineteen seventy. In nineteen seventy, fifty-seven thousand dollars. Oh wait, wait. Let me guess Don't who that. Let me place. let me guess who that was in nineteen seventy. Uh, I don't know. Is Jack Nicholas? No. Nope. Arnold Palmer. Mm, too old. No. Nope. How about how about Lee Trevino? Mm. There you go. There yep. you go. I got it. Uh, that was, I, was, I was getting my <laughs> brain around that. One. Yeah. One hundred fifty-seven thousand dollars. Wow! Wow! He had a great year. Wow! But remember, in nineteen seventy, you could buy a house for ten thousand dollars in many places then. So, you really yeah. can you imagine? That's only that was only fifty years ago. Right? Yeah, that's it. Fifty years. Yep, fifty years ago. Yep. That's, what it, that's what inflation does. So, I mean, it's like a. How about <laughs> Kathy Kathy Whitworth on the woman's side? Yeah, Kathy. Thirty thousand dollars. <laughs> 30. Kathy, uh, Kathy Rigby? Yeah, she sold tampons. Kathy Whitworth, yeah. Did she sell tampons too? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, now, um, does it say, does it say who won um, the, the tennis titles there? Uh, let's see, Grand Slam events are here. Hmm. Rod Laver, right? Wasn't it Rod Laver? No, uh, there was a different winner in each of the majors uh, that year. What about John Newcomb? Newcomb was one, Wimbledon. Newcomb, like yeah, he, he he was cool. He had a good good mustache. Yeah. Arthur Ashe got the Australian. Mm -hmm. Ken Roswell got the U.S. Open. They didn't let Someone women play back then, right? Jan Cody, Cody, Jan Kodish, Jan Kodis, <laughs> yeah, Jan Kodis. He won the French, French Open, yeah, from Czechoslovakia, yeah, yeah, and uh, female swept them that year. Margaret Court, Margaret Court, yep. Yeah. I think they let women play. They let women play back then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm disappointed. Sure, they did. There's been women's tennis since 19. I don't know Althea Gibson and Suzanne Longland way back in the 20s. I think. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, there's Arnold Ziffel. They got a pig Arnold there, Ziffel. too. Yeah, you got a pig. But that's, uh, he's, he looks a little, well, he's a little, I hate to say it, he's darker skin than Arnold Ziffel was, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> he does. He has got a dark Now, pig. is this show 1970? No, this is like 67, 68. Oh, it's even farther back. Wow. Um. Okay, well, what else uh, from 1970? What other beneath the Planet of the Apes? Oh God! I know it was great. It was the second, the second movie. I had James Franciscus. It was before it really got bad. 
I thought mm. the second movie was pretty good, and then they blow up the world at the end. So, uh, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we, we spoke earlier about the Kent State shootings. So um, a few days later in May was the Hard Hat Riot. I don't know if you gentlemen ever heard of this before. This is where unionized construction, construction workers, workers attack about 1,000 students and others protesting the Kent State shootings near the intersections of Wall Street and Broad Street oh. and, and New York City Hall. So here you are, that just like, like us. That sounds like a mess. Well, you've got people protesting and rioting and having a fight for something that happened in Ohio in New York City. So oh, don't we have that happening today yeah. where you have people protesting about something that happened to None of George Floyd in a city that has nothing, and you know, protesting their own none local of, police. None of it's localized. That nothing, exactly. But this is, it's happening again. This has happened before in our history. We will survive this period as... as, as you know, dire as Frank gets, we will survive. I, I have enough faith that we'll come through this, but it is very. I I didn't feel maybe you didn't uh, maybe you chose not to see these things growing up in the seventies. See what things exactly what we're seeing today. These divisions. I saw them. I I lived through this. It was very uncomfortable living well, through this stage of this stuff well, happening. Well, where you'd have protests in one city about what happened in another. We city. were very young. We were too. I was too young to really remember much. Yeah, of I wasn't. <laughs> Unfortunately, I took I mean, it all in. That was, um, it was very uncomfortable. What was I, about, about 12, 13? Yeah, you probably remember watching on TV. Yeah. I don't remember that. And the same level of political correctness yeah, I, I was coming out yeah. where you couldn't, you couldn't voice a free idea and put it out there. You'd be victimized for it or accused of all kinds mm-hmm. of things or demonized for okay, well, free speech. Okay, well, the interesting thing in that in 68 was that uh, Nixon won in that environment and uh this is more like 72 actually but yeah. well 68 and we were talking about wallace he he actually was in 68 that's when he yeah. he stole yeah. he got so many votes so many popular votes uh-huh. that it, it undoubtedly threw the election to, well, to the republicans because hubert humphrey wasn't going to win anyway i'm sorry why he was vice president under, yeah he was i mean people knew him they did but but he was going to get a, well i don't know the, the wallace votes do you think how, that's a good question. Like, what amount of the Wallace votes would have gone to, to Humphrey? Well, you know what, Nixon? I, I, you know, I, I would have thought the Wallace votes would have been splitting uh, the Republican side, but now that I think of it, because it was a Democratic South, I'm not so sure. Wasn't so, you know, Wallace? I, a, I, Wallace was a Democrat. He was a Democrat. Yeah, right. it was a Democrat. So yeah. Democrat, so he was splitting uh, the, the Democrats' vote. Yeah, so, I never even so thought of that. I didn't look at that, but me. like, did did Nixon win a bunch of Southern states because of what Wallace was doing? I don't know. That's a good question. That's, that's worth we, some research We could there. analyze that, but all I know is that Nixon clearly didn't win a pl- – he won a plurality of the popular vote. He didn't even come close to winning a majority. No, not in, not Cause, in 68. Because w- Wallace won 9 million votes. Got my 9 mm-hmm. million votes. In 72, different story, but not in 68. So that was one of the things that was – that that political – Turmoil, obviously. Yeah, um, great deal of turmoil. Uh, oh, we didn't talk about uh, we didn't talk about the basketball at all. Oh, that was that was a good good series, a seven game series, the Knicks and the Lakers. Yeah, Willis Reed. Yeah. I think we see Willis coming out. There he comes right now, six feet ten from Grambling. Who's the announcer? All of a sudden, this guy comes out, not limping. I'm talking about dragging his yeah, leg. Yeah, the guy that did all the bowling. I couldn't believe it. All Why over the arena, the doors were dropping. They were just screaming and yelling. The decibel yeah. was outrageous. I've never oh. heard that kind of roar and uplift in the garden, yeah. ever. Here. It's like, Willis is going to play. Willis is going to play. I would love to say that that was all contrived, okay? <laughs> His late arrival, but, uh, you know, he was receiving treatment. The Knicks welcome him. Willis hits a couple of shots, a couple of jumpers, and now the place goes crazy. They are actually cheering warm-up basket. It's a standing ovation at the new Madison Square Garden. That's not Keith this Jackson, is a Chris Schenkel. Crowd, well, that, and that's... they have been reacting to their Knickerbockers the same oh, way all either. season long. Okay. And he has hit two in a row. Chris Schenkel. The, the fans are saying, the voice of the everything's all right, does, the captain all is here. <laughs> and I'm saying, okay. Boy, he's he's a a and, uh, here I am, 
a guy He's on ABC. one leg going to really play the greatest ball. score ever, big man. The guy, only, only guy ever scored Most 100 real. points in the game. And I'm going to try to do it on one leg. Now hear that. This is when Madison Square Garden had something to cheer about. The die was cast after that. I mean, just the whole magic of Madison Square Garden. I love man. Clyde Frazier. Like, Frazier. I think the spirits of that team are so high. And it's something we had lived for, something that we had promised ourselves we were going to do the year before, you know, in Boston Garden, uh, that, you know, I don't think there was any way we were going to lose that game. So once we got out by 12 or 13, the, the, the Lakers never really made a bona fide run, but I was always watching the clock, like tick, clock, tick. It was like it was going so slowly. And uh, finally, when I realized that, that we were going to reach the, the pinnacle, uh, you know, it was, it was like a dream come true. And now four seconds. Three, two, one. We have a new Bill NBA Bradley was champion. on that team. 113.99 became the most famous score in Nick history. But one thing that was lost was the game Walt Frazier had. He recognized the captain was out. And I <laughs> actually took over and decided this was my moment. And it certainly was. Stealing all over the place. Walt well, Frazier, very simply, had the best game of a Hall of Fame career in the most important game he ever played and the mm-hmm. most important game in New York Nick history. We personified team because you can't mention Frazier without Bradley, without DeBusher, without Reed, without Barnett. And that's how the Nick fans viewed us and uh, that's how we viewed ourselves. I guess they we didn't were know. players from different backgrounds that came together with one unifying objective, Dave and that was, was to win the you world championship. With everybody. And it was as simple as that. We had great imagination. We had great discipline. We had great selflessness. And that's why we Bill were Bradley, great Princeton University. We did something that no other team in the history of the Knicks had ever done. And that's great to have been a part of that moment with those men. Three, two, one. We have a new NBA champion. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. I like those Knicks teams. They also had Phil Jackson. As a player. <clears throat> yeah. Mm-hmm. Fargo Phil. Yeah. And, uh, my other players. favorite on that team was I liked Earl Monroe, but I guess he didn't join them until uh, the second championship. Is that right? Do you, do you know, Brian, whether he was on the uh, – he was on the first one, right? Who, Monroe? Yeah. Pearl. Earl of Pearl. He's one of these champions. Uh, yeah. I know who he is. I'm not sure where he was a member. <laughs> well, you salute. Look at how you have ways of, of restorative justice uh. for your relationship. <laughs> <laughs> I could use that, yeah. Uh, yeah, look at that. that lady looks old. Lady. She's really happy. <laughs> oh, come on, the Knicks. Yeah, so he play, when did he play for the Knicks? I thought that year, so he was on the second Knicks champion. Yeah, 1973. Yeah. <sighs> ten, what the hell is that? September uh, September 18, 1970, uh, Jimi Hendrix just found dead. Oh, overdose. You choking yeah. a ham sandwich? <laughs> choking a sandwich, okay. Yep. And uh, later the next month, the following month, uh, Janis Joplin on October 4th. Yeah, she choked on a ham sandwich, right? There was a lot of people dying. God. Ooh. And then, of course, you had Jim Morrison killed himself. In yeah, he was really fashionable back then. That was the, 72. the next year, Morrison, yeah. Or 71. Yeah, 71 for Morrison. 71. Was it 71? Yeah, 71. Because then they did the, uh, after Morrison Hotel, they did L.A. Woman, right? 
Yeah. But that must have been right. that, that was, was seventy one. Seventy one yeah. and before he 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 was yeah, f- found there. dead in the uh, bathtub in Paris, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm, okay. Yep. Yeah, and um, we didn't really talk much about the hockey. The Bruins won the hockey, and Bobby Orr had the famous goal. We, I, I have. But a, you did, you did explain why to me yeah. he went hor- fully horizontal airborne. Yeah, which I never knew the story behind this, because there's that famous photograph, right? As as I'm sure Brian recalls, uh, Bobby Orr in the air, fully horizontal, just a few feet above the ice, with his arms all spread out. I I kind of like well, I always wonder how this guy's going to land with a concussion. He when didn't. He, ice. he didn't. Thank though. God. I guess he got his knees up or something. It was a great. It was a great picture too. Mm-hmm. But well, how did that happen? Some Tyler? yes, apparently. One of the St. Louis Blues players um, got their stick, uh, stuck their stick, uh, you know, inside the the part that's the opening at the bottom where the blade is, you know, on the skate. So kind of hooked him yeah, and, hooked his, and hooked his his feet so he lost, vertical so, as he so he, he got kind of jerked up into the air anyway. So that's that's why it was such a he got so high in the air. And so horizontal. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yep. Can I play some George Patton from 1970? Mm. Yep. I love this clip. I think I've made myself clear, sir. It's true Montgomery's met the toughest resistance of the campaign there at Catania. However, if we're required... clear. Old Monty is as stuck as a bug on flypaper. Yes, sir, but this order from General Alexander directing you to give up the Vizzini Caltagirone Road and turn it over to Montgomery. I don't know. Bradley will have to slug, slug, mind you, his way up the center of the island over those tough mountain roads, won't he? That's yes, supposed sir. to imitate mine, though. Messina, Bell. Messina! Messina. That's the heart of it. If they followed my plan, I'd be there by now. I'd cut off the retreat of every goddamn German and Italian on this island. All right, now you know what I'm going to do? First, I'm going to go to Palermo, then I'm still going to beat that limey son of a bitch Messina. That's the last thing I ever do. Hey, what's all this talk about taking the Vizzini Road away from Second Corps? Carl Malden. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's about to get his mission to. He's going to be crawling across those hills to beat Monty back. Yeah, Carl Malden. He did, too. He's kind of in his prime there. Yep. So he's thinnest, anyway. <laughs> Mm. But his nose was pretty big even then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like doing cocaine with Carl Malden. Mm. He's a good uh, family guy. <laughs> you don't like that, Brian? Yeah. <laughs> and Carl Malden's a good actor. He's been in a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Yeah, he's old school. He's not still alive, is he? He can't be, right? I don't think so. I'm sure he's not. What, what do you know about Mary what Kate and Ashley? Yeah. And do you ever heard of Mary Kate and Ashley? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah he's oh Eric's got a pretty good clip from that. Yeah, here's uh, they they do Tijuana together. Oh, okay. Woo! Mary Kate and Ashley do Tijuana party. <laughs> Jet skis, lunch. And more agua, señoritas. Enjoying your vacation. Um, donde está your parents? IDK, Arizona. Bear. <laughs> Evil. I had so many uh, Chirlia temples. I can't even remember which twin I am. Uh-oh. No! That's Ashley! what happens in Mexico. Wait, am I Ashley? I will find you because I have skills. A very particular set of skills like <laughs> tap dancing and looking cute while riding a horse. <laughs> Gonna save you. Oh my god, no, I'm saving you. They're both in the van now. Oh. Kidnappers going crazy. You <laughs> run away while I distract them. No, you distract them and I'll oh. <laughs> I'd never leave you. Aww. Put these on. Oh my god, Ashley, <laughs> do you know what this means? Fashion, Fashion montage! montage. <laughs> uh-uh. <laughs> no. No. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Guy looks like Harvey Twin Weinstein. Virgins. <laughs> There's a guy with a hairy chest. Hairy chest and a pop belly. We said we 
think we're going to lose our virginities Boxer together. Shots. Okay, kind of weird. I've been a terrible <laughs> twin. No, I have. I shouldn't have yelled at you. It's okay. I forgive you. Mm, yeah, that's oh, it. God. Yeah, yeah, now kiss. Yeah. Ew, <laughs> we're sisters, you sicko. <laughs> hey, yeah. going crazy. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> That kick twice, you know. Twin power, guns, yeah. I'll take that, Jabba the Ugg. Oh my God, you are so funny. Stop it, you're taller. Oh, you stop it. Stop it. <laughs> now they're making oh, out. Oh, we're sisters. <laughs> yeah, we're sisters. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was great. That was incredible. Listen to this, because you might not be hearing this. For this is bad now. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. <laughs> Is this because she had slaves or something? It's because she was being a, like a uh, uncontrollable, you know what? Just, really? Just so it had nothing, but it had nothing to do with Black Lives Matter, did it? No. Oh, I'm so disappointed. No, we also, so did you, did, did you want to hear some, um, some Dean Martin? We got a Dean Martin roast here. Everybody wants to hear some Dean Martin. Oh yeah, I love those things. Yeah, this is pretty good. Let's make <laughs> Best man in the world, Mr. Don Rick. Yeah, I like Don Rick. I really don't like you, Evil. I never did. <laughs> You're annoying with your dummy motorcycle doing your trick-or-treat jobs off walls. Who cares? <laughs> Senator, I'm terribly sorry about the election. You should have been president. Talking to Barry Goldwater. Uh, I would like to kiss your knuckles and just, just be with you all the time. Because <laughs> to sit in Arizona and watch a coyote die, to me, is fun. <laughs> <laughs> I had a broad once. used to hang around Arizona just lay in the damn desert going... <laughs> Yes, Senator. And I mean this sincerely. You will be taken to your car, as always. And good luck to you in the Congress. I, I know that you sit there every night and go, What are they voting on? <laughs> <laughs> well, kids, <you>, Senator. <laughs> yeah, Frank Kennedy. Anyway, uh, that's why you weren't president. You'd never laugh. You want to be like Ford, wear the suit that doesn't fit. <laughs> now, I like to say, Notice the way Goldwater went. That was a good one. Now, Good to see you, Isabel, the wonderful black lady down on the end. I, I kid about black people. We need yeah. you people, really <laughs> do. <laughs> I always kid the blacks. Uh, my friend, Harry Goings, he's my dearest friend. He's been with me 22 years. He's black, and he's not here tonight, unfortunately. He was on safari, and a tiger ate him. <laughs> you know what the blacks do. They run in front of the leopard, go, here come a tiger, Mr. Lipschitz. <laughs> Senator Goldwater went, I gotta use that sometime. <laughs> I kid my uh, dear friend Dr. Joyce Brothers, I wouldn't let you treat my nails. <laughs> Dave Kaplan, uh, my launchman, that means a brother of my people, also a Jewish boy. Uh, had, you, uh, had you known evil personally, you could have been up close. But unfortunately, as my people say, love thyself as thy love thy cutter. Thy rabbi will bring thee to thyself with thy faith. <laughs> Notice Goldwater went, that's true. <laughs> God bless you, Nipsey. When you get a chance, the hotel has to be clean. <laughs> Tonight is your night, Evil. He's evil, can evil, and you, William Conrad. You're a heavy man, Bill. You're going to swell up and die. Listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you worry, Evil. You'll never die. You had your shot at it. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, to you, I really mean this, Glenn Campbell. You've been my favorite. Glenn Campbell. When the wife and I sit at home, we play all his albums. <laughs> Saturday night with you, sitting around the house, going, "My brother knows, my father knows, they're so down, my lip, my brother kind dying." <laughs> Three clowns in the back went, "Sing it, boy, sing it." <laughs> you dummies, you're gonna die singing those cowboy songs. Do what Dean does. 
everybody. <laughs> Somebody pull the cord on Dean so his lip works. <laughs> Of course, my idol, Milton Berle. God bless you, Milton. What a night for you. You've been such a great star over the years, and now we're going to put you in a home. <laughs> no, 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 it's only a joke. And Jackie Cooper, I'll never forget when Wallace Beery said, Ah, gee whiz, kid, I love you. Gee, Jim, I want to be Jim. I want to be with you. Ah, get away from me, kid. Get away from me. <laughs> That's damn good. <laughs> Ruth Buzzy is made up in her costume. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's really Ruth Buzzy, folks. <laughs> it's what you call a mercy date. <laughs> She's a lovely actress, and she will be in the state hospital running through the halls going, Want to see my kite? <laughs> Charlie Callis, a great star. I spoke to the Mayo Clinic, and they want your tongue put in a jar. <laughs> I do want to say this has been a great night. Evil Knievel, I've, you know, we've met each other. I was here when, unfortunately, at Caesar's Palace, when you hit the wall and the ambulance driver went, <laughs> he crashed. <Yeah. laughs> you're a great hero, Evil. Really, you are. Either that or you're dumb. Uh, take a motorcycle and jump over 12 trucks while the Jewish promoter's gone, he'll never make it. <laughs> And the Italian's gone, eight to five, he clears the truck. <laughs> and the color guy going, don't, Man. you're going to die. <laughs> Is this too fast, Senator? <laughs> don't write letters, folks, we cover them all. <laughs> That's the whole thing, to have an American hero. When I was a kid, Jack Armstrong was my hero. Now we have you in your tutti fruity suit. <laughs> You're married how many years now, Evil? Sixteen years. I just can picture him just sitting with the wife every day. <laughs> she goes, do it to me! <laughs> I'm kidding. But, you know, I make jokes about you, Evil. Why? Because it takes a great deal of courage to do what you do, to jump over canyons, jump over trucks, get a job like everybody else. <laughs> Stop annoying people with your trick-or-treat jobs. <laughs> May I say to all of you, you really made a living, to you, man. Evil, thank you for making me fly up on Dean's plane. We had a pipe of cup with a rubber band on his nose. And somebody blew on us and we took off. It was a great trip. And you are one of the cheapest Italians I have ever known. Sinatra's going to hear about this. Frank couldn't be here tonight, unfortunately, because this wasn't exciting. But uh, <laughs> unfortunately, he's in Salerno going, I did what I was told. <laughs> you notice, Senator, how I made it Salerno? Because I know you're taking notes. <laughs> to you, evil, good luck. Continue your great courage, no matter what you do. Just live, enjoy life, and pass on to all our youngsters, men and women. Your mm. great courage. I love you. All right. The great Don Rickles, who's going to be banned this week. Yeah. Not very politically correct. He was great. No. But he was uh, fantastic. Yeah. Well, well, what time we got? We had 10.34, Chab Dogs here. Oh, uh, so we ran over. Uh, all right, well. We're going to wrap things up here. Any last-minute uh Things to add here, Brian, because we're we're gonna close the show down now. It's a, it's a, today we're close. We touched on all the major stuff. Just a little side note that um, cricket. They were talking about a lot of international stuff going on in 1970. That's when South Africa was banned for their apartheid, mm. and they were a world power at the time. But they didn't get back to it until 1991. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Faulty Towers. You ever watch <laughs> Faulty Towers? <laughs> no. There's the episode about the the Germans. Huh. Don't 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 mention the war. Okay. The whole skit. Oh. Anyway, that's another episode that got pulled, canceled this week. Uh, pulled because there was a drop. Oh, yeah. You know, they, they decided to bring back the Gone with the Wind. They did a quick uh, a quick opening with some um, 
some uh, black person uh, note. He's going to do a little introduction before the movie's oh, filmed or, oh, good. or shown. Yeah. Good, good. So we can get some okay education here. Well, <clears throat> um, we're gonna ha- we're gonna sign off for this week. We'll be back next week. I haven't decided what we're covering next week, but uh, we'll figure it out. The year seventy one. And uh, have a good week. Have a good week, <laughs> Brian. Thanks for calling in and check out Brian's site on uh, Facebook, Sports Rock. It's a great, great group. And uh, I'm part of that. I have a lot Thanks. of fun with a good, lot of nice part of people. Sports Rock too. It is a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. We like sports. Thank you. Sports. Thank you. And then check out my website at chavdog.com, and I have a Facebook page. And uh, that's that's all for this week. We'll see you next week. And um, well, there's one more point here on, on the on the Hong Kong update. Uh, oh. We have now have uh, three super carriers mm-hmm. are, are in the South China Sea. Three, count them three, which is a lot. We don't really mm-hmm. station. And mm. actually, we're we're not so much protecting Hong Kong as we are Taiwan, which China is massing for an invasion. But now we have three super carriers there mm. to uh, to mm. try to sway 1970 all over again. Tension <laughs> tensions escalating again. Yeah, tension okay. is escalating again, and they're me- yeah. actually meeting. Yeah, is, the press is not reporting this, but Chinese officials are meeting with our officials in Hawaii to discuss the tense situation they build up in, in the Pacific okay. right now. So there's. Maybe potentially military action. So when it comes out this week, you know, you're, you, at least you two know, and anyone okay. listening knows what's happening. Okay. So what what are we going to end yeah. with? What song? Uh, we could end with uh, "Love Grows, My Rosemary what, Goes," how we, or "Dig a Pony." That's something uh, we have up. All right, let's do. Uh, let's just do "Love Grows." I let's do that. Yes. All right. Take it easy, guys. All right. Thank you. Take take care. "Love Grows," Edison Lighthouse, 1970. Just go.